Hi guys and welcome back to the shop. Um, I've been thinking about the videos that I produce and so on. Any subject you want on YouTube, it's been done 10 times over. So if you think about it, you know, like ox tools, Tom doesn't show you anymore how to drill a hole or fly cut or anything. He's doing his meat loaves. He's sharing uh, or trying to teach. He's more of a teaching uh, new instruments, new, new material, new stuff, finds and things. Just like the last video I did on that uh, Pratt and Whitney blocks, it was kind of a journey, you know, something new, something entertaining. So um, I'm finding it very difficult to come up with new material to do every Friday. So I'm only going to do things that I think aren't out there or has an entertainment kind of value to it. So for this video, it's a little quick project. Um, don't know if <clears throat> I'm going to use it or not. Um, you'll see what it is, but I did try to shoot video differently, which you'll see in this uh, in this video. Okay. So hopefully I have something for next Friday. Let's see. See you later. Always amazing how you can go in the scrap drawer and find something that you can use. Already had marked this, but I realized this side has been sawed, so it's probably not straight. It doesn't even look like it. it. Looks like it's angled up. So I gotta mark the other side. I'm doing this whole thing in metric. What did I want? I think I wanted 20 millimeters. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to mark this side. All right, turn it around. 20 millimeters here, come on. With a little extra for the saw blade. Oop. All right, so I want to cut there. And then another 20. Uh, cut there. And this part goes back in the um, scrap drawer for something else. I know it's going to be used. <laughs> Love this ruler, man. It's a Mitutoyo. I spent a lot of money for it on Amazon, but man, it's nice. Metric and Imperial, and does tents, which I love. All right, let's go to the bandsaw. Right. Second piece. Uh -huh. All right. Next, we get to go off to the mill. Right. Let there be light. Huh. Get rid of that. And the other one. Still need to redo this light somehow. But all right. My favorite aluminum end mill from Travers Tool. No burrs on the bottom. And it looks like, yeah, it's gonna clear that. So the sod crooked edge is up. Pushing down. Oh, they're like exactly the same height. And move this over. Just need to clean up this side and then flip it over, clean up the other side. Bring it down. Yeah, that end mill is big enough to cover both at the same time. Down, lock it. Okay, lights, camera, action, huh? So how it's gonna be. Wow, it's 
there he's going to do it in one pass, huh? Yep, pretty much. That's nice. Yeah, uh, take it a little bit more. What is that? There's still a black mark there. Yeah, black mark on. Yeah, nice. Alright, so there's that side done. If the mill's tilted this way, the top is towards me a half a thou. So it just takes the slightest sweep off. Give it a nice finish, and I want it over there anyway because I'm on this side of it. Okay, <clears throat> well, roll this guy. Where is my squares? Nope, yep, just makes it. <laughs> okay, I gotta get this. <clears throat> this is gonna be fun, right? Yeah, get all the junk out of there. So, I gotta try to hold this thing square. To a side to get a good sweep. Hmm? <laughs> right. Oh. That's got it. Yep. Well, they locked it in, huh? Can I sneak it out? No. It's like the same thickness, and I'm gonna mess up my fur. All right. So I need to use. Uh, I guess I'll use this guy. All right, this is going to be fun, right? Trying to hold them together and the same height. <laughs> there, he's got to go in the middle. I want him there. Uh, got it. Perfect. Yep, that doesn't rock. So there it is. All right, so I'm not gonna bore you guys. I just wanna get my squared up material. And this is where the adjustable parallel comes in. Because it's wide and it's skinny enough that I can get it out. It's wide enough that both parts can sit on it together. Which, I gotta to bring it together more and push it down. All right, perfect, it's sitting Yep, it's right on it, and then it comes right out. So, ta-da! <laughs> so now I have nice square material here. Yes, I know, the last thing you want to do is lap on your precision granite surface. But I'm very, very careful. There's no dirt, wipe it down, and I make sure there's no sanding stuff on the bottom side. And I just realized I dropped one of those square gauge blocks and I got a chip in it and I can feel it's a dent. These, I don't know where these came from. They weren't there before, but I can't feel anything. In any case, this is the my kind of workhorse block. I've got my precision one. Well, they're both precision, but my other one's over on the other side of the shop and nothing ever touches its surface other than, you know, doing tools and stuff. WD-40, 600 grit. I got a little bit of a ways to go here to try to get some smooth surfaces for the inside. And you can see this stuff comes right off real quick. <laughs> Wipe it off. Where am I? Yeah, just got a little bit more to go. I need a little more juice on the outside edges here. Try not to let it even come out to... Um... Ah, here's the phone. Who cares? to get on the granite block. I don't want WD-40 on it, even though you just wipe it right off with uh, Windex. And almost, jeez, it's like really close. <laughs> All right. Telemarketer, computer, robo calls and stuff. Getting so tired of that. There, that should be pretty much so it for that one, right? Uh, yep, that's it. Flatter than I'll get out. Where's the other one? There it is. All right, pick a surface. <laughs> Which one do I want? Jeez, probably that surface. I should almost wipe this down and get all the particles out of the grit so it works better. Matter of fact, I am gonna do that here. 
Get that one out. Wipe this one down for what it's worth. Yeah, he's getting there. Get all this junk out. All right, well, that's just basically what I do here to get nice surfaces. All right, I know the camera's not in very close. This is kind of glary too. Maybe I can fix it a little bit. No, angling ain't gonna do it. All right, so blue DRO, which is really a touch DRO, is fired up. There's all the stuff. I just zero it out for the heck of it. Um, I need to make a very small slot in this guy. So I gotta find the center from both sides. So edge finder, I've got a 3 8 in there right now. Uh, I'm clear and everything's ready to go. So low RPM and I just go in until it snaps. Almost there, huh? I don't have to be super accurate with it, but right there it just snapped all right so i zero everybody out go up over find the other side and then i'll find dead center <laughs> over 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 and there we are cleared it go down pretty far and find this edge hopefully you guys can read the numbers There, just snapped. All right, so I pick the x-axis and I hit cut the thing in half, close it. And all I have to do is go to zero, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and 50, 40, 8,000, seven, six, five, one, zero. I'm on dead center. All right, so lock the spindle, pull this guy out, and I got my little cheat sheet here, 3 8 no, this is actually 7 16 but it's a 3 8 shank, and I only tighten by hand, it's plenty enough. Bring it down, I just want to touch the edge of it here, so back it up, all right, so I just touch it. And then zero everything out. So Z is zeroed now. Because I need to go down really little. <laughs> I need to go down, what do I got? 25,000. So take it down 5,000. And I just go at it. There's 5,000 coming right off. Go down 10, 10,000, a little bit more speed out of it. Yeah, I could take big cuts, but why bother, you know? It's a mini mill, it's not that solid. All right, go down to 15, all right, 17. X is still zeroed out, good. Uh, 22, because then I'll make the final cut. All right, and 25, four and five. And I need to go to either side 17,000, so I'm turning that way, so I'm gonna take X to 8,000, make my cut. And then go to the other side, eight thousandths. Oops, staying on 25. Okay, so the other side, a minus eight. Now I gotta go plus eight. Eight. Seventeen, right, I said. Yeah, seventeen. Okay, eight. Now I gotta go back this way. Eight. Oop, that's a seventeen. Well, let me do six to 14. All right, I'm almost there. Huh? Go to the other side, 14. And I'll have my groove done, man. 14, go this way. Five, nine, 12, 13, 14. 
still 25 down, 14, need to go 17, I'm gonna go 18. I want it a little bit bigger than I need, right? All right, so 18, right? 15, 17, 18. Hopefully that stays put. I need to lock that axis, yeah. And there's the final pass on that side. And then 18 the other way, right? Yep. And that'll be it, huh? 15, 16, 17, 18, lock it. So there's my 25 thousandths deep, and I forgot what the width really was, 35 thousandths or something like that. But done. So I just kind of wanted to show that, and I hope it shows up in the screen. Okay, what do I need to shoot the next scene here? Got my block. I got the mitzvotoil ruler. I need the other rulers to show. And here they are in the drawer. Alright, so I can show that all the rulers do fit, I hope. <laughs> we'll see. That's the three, and I need those knobs. I need my old knobs from a previous project. Oh, and my depth guy, too. Alright, so there's the depth guy, and there's the previous project knobs. So, I think I'm set. Let's bring the camera over here. Oh, I need overhead light. <laughs> can't see squat there we go better yeah all right now let's bring the camera over not sure if anybody has figured out what this little guy is but I use this thing left and right to find the depth of holes and things like that you just set it on there lock it and then you can take this guy the back boom there's the dimension okay so I figured scrap what the heck <laughs> This guy, this is what it's for. If I can lock it and set the depth, it fits all the rulers. This is the Mitutoyo General, goes in there. So whichever one I want to use goes in. It's a nice fit. And the Craftsman goes in. So, but the only pro, come on, Craftsman goes in, yep. The only problem is I was planning on putting the locking knob on the side, screws there. I found some, you know, flat Phillips um, 440s drill and tap, run this whole thing through the fly cutter to clean it up. Still have more to do on the finish, but I'm figuring, all right, drill it out and make that a fake screw. No, because the threads are going to make this thing spread. So knob goes right here. It might actually be better too. It's on the top couple of things left over from previous projects um, if I'm putting it here and I use brass I'm gonna have to put plastic something on the tip because I don't want to mess up my rulers or leave marks in them so I think I'm just gonna go with this thing a plastic knob that's it's pretty big I may make another knob here off camera thread it I was always wondering if you could knurl plastic. That would be an interesting to try. Put this thing in there, try it on this side. But so I'm just going to make another knob. Forgot how I did this. Oh, I must have done it on the rotary and plunged with an end mill. Is what I did to make it. So I'm going to make one a little bit smaller, I guess. Yeah, because that's pretty big. I don't know. But I'll finish this guy up off camera. And that's generally what I'm making out of just some stuff in the scrap drawer. Will I use it? I don't know, you know, to set the depth of something repeatedly. You know, I can, I can easily set this at one inch. Use the calipers, I could set it to one inch to a thousandth. <laughs> um, and then whatever I'm going to do with it, I don't know. But hope you guys enjoyed the video and some of the machining and things that I did show. So see you next time.